This will be part four of our new teaching that we're doing on who is the church or what is the church. And uh, again, please, if you haven't listened to the uh, first three series of this teaching, uh, please go back and do that because uh, there's, you'll be able to uh, get to to the better understanding of what we've shared so far. And um, But we have talked about the fact is that the... Uh, the Messiah, the Mashiach, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, starting at verse 13, he uh, he declared that, uh, well, he asked the, his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And uh, their response was, some say that you're Elijah, some say that you're John the Baptist, but but he said, but the Mashiach said, well, hope, tell me, who do you say that I am? In other words, tell me, what do you think? And then Peter popped up and said, thou art the Christ, or the Mashiach, the son of the living Elohim. And again, the Messiah said that flesh and blood did not reveal that to Peter, but that his father had revealed that to him. And he said, because of that, he said, upon that revelation, he said, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, or upon this, see, he wasn't talking about just a rock. He's talking about upon this foundation, upon this revelation, just like you've received me at, or know who I am, upon that revelation will I build my church. Again, the, the English word church is, was not the word that the Messiah used. Of course, it was the Hebrew word hakal. And uh, that word actually means uh, assembly or congregation. It means uh, or, you know, it's assembly of set apart ones. And uh, notice that the the really the church when did the church begin when did the church that the messiah talked about when did it begin well it began you know um on the day really of shavuot when he um he poured out his ruach upon the 120 you know in the upper room upper room and first of all if you remember he told them to wait for the promise of the father before they went into jerusalem and started preaching the gospel he said wait and you shall be witnesses unto me. But he said, wait for the promise of the Father. And that the reason for that was they that the Ruach had not been given yet. See, the Messiah, first of all, had to die, had to pay the price for man's redemption, had to be raised again for our justification. And once that happened, then the Ruach HaKadosh, the, the set-apart spirit, could be given unto mankind. So it could be a part of the fulfillment of the scripture where the the Messiah said over the Gospel of John that in, in John chapter 3 that a man must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. He has to have a new Ruach. He has to be born of the Spirit. And this is the being born of the Ruach causes us to be one with the Father. We become partakers of the divine nature according to 2 Peter chapter 1. We become partakers of the divine nature and uh, that is because we now have his Ruach. I shared in, the, in our last session on part number three, I shared with you the fact over the book of Ephesians, Paul said that uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, we both have access by one Ruach unto the Father. Now, just because you, you are, say, brought up in a, quote, church, and you go to church, and you, or you go to a synagogue, and you practice your so-called, so say, religion, or you do religious things, you may you may, may even follow the teachings of the Torah. You might even uh, celebrate all the the feast uh, uh, of Yahuwah, the Moedim, the, the the feast of Yahuwah. You may observe Shabbat. You may do a lot of things. You may go to you may teach uh, Sunday school in your Christian church or whatever. You might do a lot of good things, but again, that doesn't make you part of the church. Not of the church that the Messiah is talking about. What makes you part of the, of the assembly that the Messiah is speaking about is those that have rec been built upon the foundation of their revelation of who the Messiah is. And it's not just a head knowledge. It's not just having some kind of knowledge about, uh, you know, I know that, you know, I mean, you could read a history book and find out that certain people lived. And if you ask me, well, did George Washington live? And I guess, yes, because the history books tells me that. Well, a lot of people have that kind of, uh, belief in the Messiah. They they believe that he lived, okay. But there's a difference in actually getting the revelation by the Ruach of who he really is, that he is the son of Yahuwah, and that he is the Messiah, 
and that you have uh, believed on that foundation and if you truly believe in your heart you you're totally uh, have repented of your sins you've totally put your faith and trust in the messiah then you can receive the ruach hakadesh because of that and because see, the ruach the father the scripture says no one can, uh, the messiah said no one can come to me except it will be given unto him by the father now what he's making reference to is that it takes the ruach hakadesh for someone that's seeking to know the truth it takes the ruach to open up their understanding of just like he did with peter to recognize who the messiah was and it's by the ruach that that happens so again this i'm sharing this with you so you can get a really a good foundation and understanding when the scripture talks about who about the church and it's going to really help you to, to understand better about the the scriptures in the book of revelation when it talks about the church so with that said, thank you for joining me this afternoon, and we'll continue this. Uh, I don't know how many more sessions we'll do, but uh, we'll just keep going till I believe that, that uh, the Father says this is enough. But uh, for right now, we'll, we've got more to share. So I love you. Yahuwah loves you. Shalom.